Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show, Russ. 51 Drones. Hey How you doing, oh, yeah. man? Thank you for, for uh, taking the time to join us. Uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, before we get into the whole thing, tell us a little bit about your channel and what people can expect. There's a link in the description. I encourage everyone to please go ahead and subscribe because he's got some great stuff on there. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, uh, well, I just kind of started getting into drones uh, January of 2017. So it's been about a year and a half, I guess. And um, and really, the, the reason that I started a YouTube channel is I wanted to have like a diary just to kind of keep track of my progress as I learned how to use a drone. And people started subscribing to it. And I thought, well, maybe I got something going here. And and um, just started making more videos and and people really responded to like the tutorials from a beginner's perspective and so that's kind of what my channel still focuses on even though you know I've been doing it for <laughs> you know almost two years now you know I still consider myself a beginner so I think people you know feel that a connection with me because they're just starting to learn how to fly these things and and so I kind of approach my content in that way um, and, and try to show people what it's like to do some of these things for the first time. So good, so they can learn along with you. Yeah, good, yep. good, good, good. And well, uh, yeah. and you know, <laughs> and I learned I learned some of the things the hard way. <laughs> so I think a lot of people do as well. So yeah, well, you know, that's what we have to do sometimes. You got to sink before yeah. you can swim. And uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, we lately you've been getting a lot of attention on your channel because you've been talking about uh, some of the legislation that's happening. Uh, the repeal of Section 336. Now that has happened. That has happened. Yeah, the Senate did vote to uh, to pass the FAA reauthorization bill of 2018 yesterday, and uh, so there's a lot of changes coming, in particular for hobbyists. And yeah, it's amazing what uh, <laughs> it's amazing what one video can do. Uh, one thing that I did learn in the last week is there there's definitely a lot of passion in this hobby, and mm -hmm. uh, and which is good. I mean people are really really into their drones and and people do not like getting uh getting their hobby stepped on uh, so to speak so uh so i've met a lot of people i've uh i've had some challenging comments because you know because it is you know it's a very uh it's a it's a very polarizing topic and so um so it's been kind of fun actually to go through the comments but so so but, tell me yeah. tell me tell me about the changes that what is this going to mean for people who haven't even heard about what's going on uh, uh section 336 is for the hobbyists right and yeah and so and so that's a very that's actually one small portion of this gigantic bill mm -hmm. and um you know as i said in my video it's 1200 pages and it, it reauthorizes everything for the faa so basically it had to pass i mean mm -hmm. they really didn't have a choice because the faa FAA needs to be funded and so you know I don't want I don't know how much was actually read about the drones from our Senate but uh, but yeah 336 was repealed and basically that was what governed how hobbyists should fly I mean the regulations for hobbyists and so that has gone away um, they introduced section 349 now which is very similar um, and, and there's still some things that need to be decided, but as far as um, as far as the rules, they're, they're really not much different except for the not being able to fly under f above 400 AGL. And previously, hobbyists could in Class G airspace fly above 400 AGL. Now nobody can fly above 400 right, right. AGL. Right. If if so. you remember before, there was a period of time where uh, you didn't have to register your drone because of 336. Um, right. And uh, because of the repeal, this means that the FAA does have the right to regulate model aircraft, including recreational drones. Right. Um, and uh, Section 349 uh, has a bunch of rules that is going to affect hobbyists. Like you just said, uh, aircraft must be flown strictly for recreation. You can't earn money with it unless you have Part 107. And there's going to be a community-based organization safety guideline uh, there's going to be a test that you have to take, and that's going to be developed within six months. Is that right? Yeah, they have a they have 180 days to develop the um, aeronautical knowledge test, and um, you know, to be honest, it's it's not it's not a bad idea to have that because of just because the influx of so many new pilots, 
And, you know, there's, there's a lot of controversy about that, but, you know, as I was reading some things from other people, this, there probably isn't going to be a fee. It's probably going to be a relatively easy test. I don't know if like when you download the DJI go for app that gives you uh, some questions about some general basic rules. I think it's going to be a lot like that. I think it's going to be a relatively easy to pass test and and uh, and w whether there's there's going to be a fee or not i i don't know it's the government so who knows but uh yeah <laughs> you know they're gonna have to pay for it pay right for and and and, and, and i know you're trying to be very diplomatic as am i because we have people we have hobbyists and sure. and professionals watching but i have to say that there's nothing wrong with with more information more knowledge Right, education is huge, and that's that's one of the good one of the good things about this about this bill being passed is that it really does ask for the FAA to find ways to educate as many people as possible because when it comes down to it, safety is a major issue um, in our skies. And so, yes, there's a lot of uh, questionable things in here, like the counter the counter UAS uh, pilot studies. They're gonna um, they granted them, I guess, permission to study uh, different countermeasures for um, hazard mitigation and so to study how to take down basically drones or disable drones that are flying in restricted airspace or TFRs, uh, temporary flight restrictions. Like if a, uh, let's say a VIP is in the area and someone's flying their drone, the FAA wants to shut down that drone. And Do you have a problem with that? Because so, I don't. Uh, I don't have a problem with that at all. If, so if, that, you're, if you're flying uh, over the presidential limo, then right. sorry, you, should, you know, yeah. that's, you're not yeah. supposed to do that. And, and you deserve to have your drone exploded yeah. or whatever they're going to do. You know, it's, it's too bad that, you know, common sense has to be regulated. But in this case, you know, it really does. So how do you feel about how do you feel about uh, the tracking of drones in the skies? Because that's that's a big thing that's being developed right now. Um, well, <laughs> uh, remote detection is kind of, it's already there. It's, the technology is there. It's just, it's really not turned on yet. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of on the fence about that. I have two, I've kind of two thoughts about it. Number one, yes, for those situations where you're flying in restricted areas, um, they should be able to track you. But, but if you're just a Joe Schmo flying out above your farm, checking out your cows or whatever, they have no business tracking you and they're probably not going to. I mean, realistically, the FAA doesn't have the manpower nor the desire to make sure that, you know, Farmer John is, you know, following the drone rules and staying under 400 AGL. But I agree. Time, you know, I, 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 I absolutely I, agree. I thought, I, and that's where, that's where people who, uh, you know, I hate the government, government, get yeah. out of my business. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, those, yeah, yeah. The, the, there's people that are gonna, I apologize for the accent. Kelly's laughing. Uh, because we know we personally know people like that, uh, but but uh, you know there's people who are going to be thinking that the government's going to be spying on them and and all that. But uh, really, unless you know, like you said, they don't have the manpower. They they don't have the the wherewithal to even want to do that unless you're causing trouble. Right. They're just going to be looking for those people in those restricted areas, and they're going to start tracking those. They're not going to flip a switch and see where everybody is flying a drone. But at the same time having that technology just makes you wary of what are they watching you know you're always going to wonder if i put my can i put my drone here you know can i fly here are they going to be watching me so so that's why you know there's so much confusion and there's so much uncertainty that's that's why people are getting so fired up about it and and and, and yeah my comments in on that video are definitely there's a lot of people that uh th didn't have a lot of of nice things to say right so, well i mean you they're really in this in this day and age there really isn't an expectation of privacy anyway because in your day-to-day -day existence you're there you're on video you're you're being surveilled you're being listened to on your phone you're being tracked by google or whoever i mean it's just the way things are right now and yeah. that will include the latest craze which is drones one thing i did find you know i kind of been reading through this bill more because my my, there's so much in there, but you know, section 376 talks about unmanned traffic management. And basically that's um, basically how the FAA will govern the highways of the sky. And so this is gonna determine how 
commercial drone use, you know, deliveries and, and whatever is being used. But right after that is Section 377, which um, basically make, makes 376 meaningless because if, if, a, if a vendor tells the FAA and shows them that they're, they can fly safely, then they can supersede those 376 rules. So even before any rules are made, you know, Jeff Bezos can call the FAA and said, yeah, we're ready to deliver. We, we can do everything safely. And the FAA can say, oh, okay, go ahead. And so the 377 gives the FAA permission to let anybody do their commercial business even before the rules are made. And so, um, so it, it's well, kind of interesting. Business and large business w will dictate legislation. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Yeah. So but if you want your pigeon jerky delivered uh, <laughs> by Amazon, it's probably coming soon. Yeah, of course, every, every bit of legislation uh, in, in this arena will benefit. Uh, large businesses that want to yeah. deliver a pizza in the sky or bring you your right. tube socks, uh, you know, yeah, in 10 right. minutes or less. But uh, <laughs> just w once, once again, as far as hobbyists are concerned who are, are upset, I absolutely understand, you know, they've been doing things the same way for years and years responsibly. Right. So, right. you know, they're saying, well, we haven't caused any trouble. You know, why are we getting slapped on the wrist in this way? Um, mm -hmm. Again, I wouldn't look at it that way. I would just look at it as progress marches on. And if 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 children and people who are inexperienced at flying a drone, especially toy drones, some of these toy drones, and I'm I'm talking the ones without GPS, they can get up pretty high and far away. And um, you know, if you're a kid that has a new drone <clears throat> that didn't do all the research and doesn't know about all the rules, uh you know, the FAA has told me personally, ignorance will be no longer be an excuse. Yep, that's um, right. You know, they're not going to put twelve-year-olds in jail, but certainly, uh, I, I liken it like this: if you're if you're a kid and you have a remote control car, um, you're not you're not driving it on the interstate because that is not accessible to most people unless you have an interstate in your backyard or you're just an idiot and, and you're a kid. You want to drive it on? That's that's crazy. If you want to drive on the interstate, you're going to need a real vehicle and you're going to need a driver's license same thing with the roads in the sky i i believe right and it's yeah. and the way things are going right now it's going to become more and more crowded and there's going to be more restrictive legislation if people keep doing dumb things like landing on the white house lawn and whatnot yeah and a lot of you know a lot of the things provisions in this bill are yet to be decided and so basically the bill gives the faa permission to do these pilot studies, to do these tests, and and to let other you know companies do these tests and then report back to them, and then so it's going to be you know the rules are are kind of yet to be developed, and it's probably going to be a moving target because as as the industry changes and as more as there's more commercial flights and as more more and more hobbyists, the rules are going to progress with that as well, and so you know this was a this was a big jump from where we were to now and and I think now with a five it's a five year bill it's a five year law and so the reauthorization is for the next five years and so they won't they won't have any changes really from our legislature for five years so any changes that come about are going to be done by the FAA and so and so we you know before we kind of you know get all freaked out and <laughs> jump on <laughs> their backs it's let's just wait and see i mean you know don't don't get all up in an uproar until we see what the final product is going to be when it comes to um legislation or to laws for hobbyists so right. i think all bottom line the takeaway is there isn't going to be that much changing for hobbyists um the restrictions are going to be a little bit more when it comes to flying in say like communities, like in town, you know, closer to airports, um, you, you, in which you probably shouldn't be flying that close to an airport anyway. I think right. one, of, one of the sections says, uh, I didn't know this, but it, it wasn't a crime before to fly near an airport. Now it's a crime to fly oh. near a manned aircraft or near a runway. And is so it they, is it a misdemeanor or a felony? Uh, it, it doesn't say that. It just says, it just says it's, it's a crime now. So. I okay. guess they had to make that law because it wasn't a crime before. So yeah, well you're so gonna you're you're gonna be keeping up with this stuff on your channel, right? 
I will. Yeah, as as things come out, I definitely will uh, will keep up today because people are pretty pretty passionate about it and and uh, it's fun to get the input. You know, I shouldn't say the comments are all bad. It, they're the majority of them are are pretty good. But uh, one thing, I, one mistake that I made was to. Uh, I asked people not to please not use vulgar language, and so I filtered all the, all the <laughs> vulgar language. Boy, oh boy, people really like to swear. Apparently, yeah. Oh, they'll 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 put they'll put dashes and they'll think oh, of yeah. creative ways to one, get around uh, that. Well, they they use substitutions. Uh, yeah. One guy one guy called me a I don't know what this is, but a fudge badger. So, <laughs> a fudge badger. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's like the honey badger. But it's a fudge only because you know the so, honey badger the honey badger don't care. <laughs> The, the fudge yeah. badger cares a little bit, <laughs> cares a little bit. Well, thank you so it's much so for right being now. on. I, I really appreciate it. We got so many other people. We got, we got a guy in Sweden waiting to, to hop on with us. So uh, Absolutely. thank you so much, uh, Russ from 51 Drones. Uh, if you have time uh, and you are interested in this topic and all of his other things, please subscribe to his channel. And thanks again for being on, sir. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, so that's the next step for me. One one buyer is all I need. Now, now, you know, uh, d does it come? It comes with the camera. Camera, GoPro, Cam GoPro, Hero uh, Five, Hero Five. Okay, so that's a great package. Now, if if, if you uh, are not sold yet, let me show you a video that might help uh, push it over the edge. Here, this is a video that uh, you put together that that you created using the GoPro Karma. All right. Yes. Yeah. No explanation needed. Let's just go ahead and watch this. Okay. So here you yeah. go. This is GoPro Karma. All right. Okay. Yeah. This Kelly Green. Awesome. GoPro Karma. <laughs> oh. You <laughs> <laughs> was that the bionic man no that was actual footage that was not uh, the six million dollar man audio <laughs> why did he run in slow motion why did he run in slow motion because he was... he was running so fast you wouldn't have seen him in normal speed uh, okay all right <laughs>